tunnel. Yeah, I think this is the one moment as a manager that you really look forward to and you really enjoy the leading your team out. There, there are not that many managers able to do that. And to get that have that occasion for you in your career, then, then this is something that I think they can save. But then, then all the hard work starts, isn't it? You know, they, uh, all of the pressure then of the game, just hoping you win. Fantastic moment. Ian Atkins and his son Jamie, who's actually leading the Northampton side out. He did that 12 months ago. He didn't want to do it again today, but his dad said, you've got to, you're our lucky charm. <laughs> Which is fair enough. Yeah, it's great. Right. Yeah, it's, it's all superstitions, isn't it? You get loads of those in the game, and whilst you don't want to do things, then something you just have to do, and if he's taking the little lad out, brilliant. This is better than the auto windscreen shield. Oh, without a doubt. Like we said, both teams have played 46 games in the league. And in, in retrospect, it, it means nothing now. That's gone. It doesn't matter how many won, lost, drawn, goals conceded, goals for. It's all out the window now. This is a cup final with a, with a bigger thing at stake because next season there's another cup final and another cup final. But for these two teams, you know, it's, it's the one chance at this moment in time that they've got to, to better themselves. And every player in, the, in any league he plays wants to better himself. If it's local park football, if it's top, top, box or conference, you want to be a professional player. And of course, we're in the second division and Northampton Town lads, they want to become first division footballers. The form of both sides was poor in the last few weeks of the season. But, but again, John, that, that doesn't matter at all now, does it? No, it doesn't. Nothing matters at all apart from this game. And as Tommy said, everything that's gone before is, is now down to one match. And as we saw on Friday night, it can rest on a decision. It can rest on a bit of your best player suddenly has a great day today or someone strikes a shot from 20 yards and it flies in where perhaps the rest of the season it's been going over the top. It's just on one, one game and the whole for the careers of people sometimes rest on this kind of thing. Let's hope it isn't a controversial decision this afternoon that decides this match. Right? Yeah, I mean, obviously I witnessed both um, legs of the semi-final in our playoffs and I felt the referee had a, a, an amazing bit part to play. players and then he awarded I felt it was a, a very dubious penalty and then again in Grimsby another one of the Fulham lads was sent off so they could feel a little bit harshly done to having to play the semi-final with 10 men. The chief guest today by the way is Alistair Dales who is the executive director for Nationwide and he's being accompanied by David Sheepshanks the chairman of the Football League. Ray Warburton the Northampton captain doing the introductions. Lots of light handshakes but really the players just can't wait to get on with it. <laughs> uh, Ray's a really strong player you know I had him at York City I actually gave him a free and he went down to Northampton we wondered if his career would actually carry on he had a bit of a back problem up there but for, for to him to come into Wembley and be, be playing in there and sort of taking his team out it's fantastic for him. And he popped in with a crucial goal of yeah. course in the playoffs his first of the season. Paul Groves is the Grimsby skipper never short of a yeah, word. Yeah I mean like I said I've, I've, I can't the shouting ball and roll your sleeve up type guy he's quiet he walks down around the dressing room having a chat and he's a talker but not a not a shouter and baller like myself but uh, <laughs> you know the, the the boys will just be uh, itching to get away from from all the, the this pomp and what have you now you know what me kicking the ball around settling their nerves and get the five minutes they'll kick off and then all the doubts and all the apprehension can be put to one side and there'll just be 90 minutes between either Grimsby and Northampton and the First Division or possibly 120 minutes and, just possibly, <laughs> a penalty shootout as well. well. Let's hope it doesn't go to penalties because, I mean, it's, the, the whole season's been about football and to decide your future on a penalty shootout would, I think, be a travesty of justice. So let's hope it gets sorted out in the 90 minutes. Well, Paul Groves has appeared in two playoff finals before, and both of those did go to penalty shootouts. He lost one. He won. To go through that again. The final handshake is conducted. Everyone is in position, and it's time now for the national anthem.
was a rousing rendition. Final word from Tommy and John. Who's going to win? John? I'm going for Northampton. Of course, you're going for Of course, I'm going for Grimsby Town. OK, more from you both at half-time. Let's now join our match commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawkins. Wembley then getting to be a habit for Grimsby and Northampton. Northampton's second visit in a year for Grimsby, their second in five weeks. And their prompt return to Wembley gives Jack Lester the perfect opportunity to work out his frustration at missing the last slice of glory. 22-year-old Lester was... ...shield five the expense of Daryl Clare is the only change to the side that emerged victorious against Bournemouth. It includes Wayne Burnett, who got Grimsby's golden goal winner that day, and Kevin Donovan, Lee Nogan and Paul Groves, who've all previously scored here in playoff finals. Yeah, big game. 4-4-2 for Grimsby this afternoon. Aidan Davidson, what a season he's had. Three clean sheets out of 62 games in goal. From right to left, McDermott, the fullback, the two centre-halves of Peter Handy side, Scotland under-21 international, Mark Lever alongside him, and Tony Gallimore, left fullback. Across the midfield, Dave Smith flying up and down the left-hand side, Paul Groves, good leader out there, hard-working midfield player. Along Northampton already this season in league matches. He is vital for this afternoon. Vital player. Up front, the youngster Jack Lester, and alongside him, ex Welsh international, very experienced Lee Nogan. A year on from the John Frame free kick that levered them into this division, Northampton returned with seven participants that day still in the fold. Some have moved on, others, like the influential duo of Roy Hunter and Sean Parrish, are injured, but the side has been bolstered by the experience of Northern Ireland international Colin Hill, the midfield drive of James Hunt from Notts County, the attacking flair of Chris Freeston from Middlesbrough, and the presence of Carl Heggs, part of the Swansea side that Northampton defeated here last term. Yeah, wing-backs, wing-back formation for Northampton Town. Ian Atkins, I think maybe rather unfairly, quoted about the long ball merchants. But what a glory year. Back last year, winning the playoff, back again. Wing-backs, Clarkson, Ian Clarkson, right-hand side. John Frayne, left-hand side. Last-minute goal last year. Samson, Hill and Ray Warburton. Warburton attacking the ball, the three centre-halves. In midfield, Dean Pierre, hard-working midfield player. James Hunt, alongside him, Carl Heggs. I think this fella got a lot of skill. If he can get the ball to the feet of Carl Heggs, he can produce for the likes of Gale and Freestone. Freestone will actually just play off Big John Gale today, especially the first 20 minutes. But Freestone has to be watched, Quicksilver, whereas Gale, he's a target man. Well, footballers are notoriously superstitious, and Northampton come here using the same dressing room with their fans at the same end as they were last year. And the one stroke of luck that they couldn't have banked on, the same referee, Terry Heilbron, who awarded the twice taken free kick that eventually led Northampton to victory in that final against Swansea. On both occasions the kick was taken by John Frayne, the second one went in, it was virtually the last kick of the game and it sent the Northampton fans into obvious raptures. Wayne Burnett's golden goal for Grimsby was the very last kick of the match in the final of the auto windscreen shield five weeks ago against Bournemouth. No golden goal in the playoff final. The full 30 minutes of extra time would be played if needed. And then, if the game still wasn't settled in that time, it would go to a penalty shootout. The penalties have never been required to separate sides in this division's final. A massive crowd here. It's expected to be the biggest crowd for the playoff final in this division. The previous best, just short of 60,000, when John Ward's Bristol Rovers lost here to Huddersfield three years ago, but Northampton fans back for their second visit in a year. Not so many Grimsby fans, the fact that it's their second visit here in such a short period of time has clearly taken its toll, but Alan Buckley will hope that despite the fact his supporters are 2-1, to one, they can inspire the team to a similar success. Even though this is a very different sort of game and a different sort of occasion to the one that they enjoyed against Bournemouth. Uh, without a doubt, it was great scenes at the end of that match, but Alan Buckley would be under no illusions. This is the big one.
who understand Northampton are a hard side to break down. And I think Northampton early on play this so tight, Rob. I think they're going to tuck the wing backs in and really try and stifle the midfield two of Groves and especially Wayne Burnett. You stop them having the ball, they can't get it wide. Tapes, the other stands it down the, the right hand side, Donovan is a real handful, and Smith down the left hand side. Well, it is a great occasion, but whereas Grimsby's last visit here was more of a day out, and in the end it didn't really matter whether you won or lost, it means quite a lot more today. And both sets of supporters recognise that, and they've built up a very fervent atmosphere, as there always tends to be for these occasions. Nothing to choose between them in previous league games, Grimsby have won one, Northampton the other, both when they were at home. But today is an occasion for the players to be fearless and focused. And focused on the prospect of First Division football next season. A massive incentive then for Grimsby and Northampton. The playoff zone in the Second Division tighter than in any of the others. Two points separated all four teams who took part in the playoffs. Grimsby finished a point ahead of Northampton in the final table. But it's Northampton who will get this match underway. Dean Peer and Chris Freestone over the ball. Terry Hilborn going through the final checks. And the 1998 Second Division playoff final at Wembley is underway. And here is Ian Clarkson, one of the survivors from Northampton's victory last year. Northampton do have this uncompromising style, and they are expected to really go for it in the opening exchanges. Here's Gallimore, a man who's become a father this week, looking for a double celebration. His other half gave birth to a baby boy. And Andy Woodman, who produced a splendid save in the early stages of last season's match from Carl Heggs, who this season is a teammate of his. He's looking for Freestone with a kick, headed away by Groves, but this is Clarkson. Looking for Peer with a cross. In comes Frayne. And Heggs here will put pressure on Gallimore, and it's gone behind for the goal kick. And Grimsby's goalkeeper, Aidan Davison, really does have a remarkable record this season. He's played in 62 matches and kept clean sheets in 30 of them. Great atmosphere here, Rob, isn't it? Logan's head, one by Hill, that was Groves, this is Lee Nogan. McDermott. This is Donovan. And somehow it managed to get under the boot of Warburton, but Colin Hill was there behind to tidy up. Yeah, it's going to be a good battle, John Frayne on the left and Kevin Donovan. Donovan can go outside, whips him in, or can come inside on his left foot. Lever, Lester, now Donovan, Burnett, McDermott, this is Paul Groves, Grimsby getting a very hostile reception to their early possession from this massive Northampton support. Jack Lester. McDermott trying to get the early ball in, but it's cut out by Warburton. This is John Gale. Heggs. Cleared by Handyside. 
the net. Leicester. And Freestone here will give chase against Peter Handyside, who was looking for the back pass. Right away, you can tell Handyside's very aware of Chris Freestone's pace. Was looking, had a good look with who his goalkeeper was, but was it, you know, he knew the presence of Freestone and he'd be worried about this fella's pace. Brain. Came off the head of Dean Peer, who's one of the uh, four Fermoy Birmingham players in the lineup. He, Clarkson, Gale, and Frayne had all previously won the Leyland Duck trophy here with Birmingham. Ian Atkins, of course, another ex St Andrews man. Coach oh, there and remembered them from those days. No doubt when the ball's wide in the left. Well, it'll be Heggs or Frayne. Watch for Peer. Try to get on the far post. has been converted by Northampton this season from an orthodox striking role to a position wide on the left. Late Hedge was on the ball, Rob. He's a few tricks, good ability, will try and find the pace of Freestone. A nice through ball. Whereas John, he's the outlet ball. If Northampton are under pressure, they'll knock it up to Big Gailey and expect him to hold it up and wait for support. Gale, who was actually substituted during last year's playoff final. Jason White, who's since left for Rotherham, came on to take his place. And this is Colin Hill to take the free kick. One of seven free transfer signings in this Northampton lineup. Samson's header, there's Burnett. Won by Freestone from Donovan. Number six is James Hunt. Laid back towards Dean Peer. And although it broke for him, he couldn't get it to Clarkson because Gallimore was there for Grimsby. Frey, not getting too much on the header. Leicester in there just unsettling them. This is Smith. Tony Gallimore. Leicester. Smith, Logan on his own in the box. The first corner of the game in the sixth minute. Yes, little fella Dave Smith will always try and go on his left hand side. Just trying to get the bile and get the ball across. Smith's cross, Gross was trying to reach it. This is Burnett. And cleared by Frayne. One or two signs of edginess there. Burnett's shot was actually deflected by his own player, Jack Lester, and Frayne not prepared to let it go back to Woodman clear. Burnett, Grimsby here feel that they have Northampton rattle. McDermott. Burnett this time playing it in, and Groves with the shot. Yeah, not bad from Burnett there, good understanding. Groves was a man who got in the, just on the edge of the box. But all started with good play from Burnett, just whipped it in, try to find his central midfield partner. Groves gets the strike away, but that's not going to, it's not going to trouble Woodman. High and wide, a good spell for Grimsby, especially down this right-hand side with McDermott, McDermott and Burnett linking well. Donovan. Here's Leicester. Good play from him, teasing Frayne. And he's won it back from Samson. Well, he's only a youngster, Jack Leicester, but already in this match, seven minutes gone, he's, had, he's seen plenty of the ball, backing into the centre-half, holding up well, this time getting wide. Selling Frayne a little dummy here, but it's a good challenge from Warburton coming over. And referee Telly Hebron feeling... Well, I feel there was a handball there, the right hand striking the ball. Jack Lester, who was so disappointed at missing out on the auto windscreen shield final through suspension that he didn't even travel with the team. Lever. It's Hunt. 
pegs. Finette, the playmaker, has given it away to Freeston. Clarkson picking out John Gale. Freestone! Big chance, Rob, big chance. Freestone on his right foot. It just didn't fall for him. And John Gale made a lovely run through the middle, picked out beautifully by Hunt. Just doesn't take it quite correct on the chest. Grimsby have got centre-half back there, and Freestone snatches at it with the right foot. Gale causes a problem with his presence. Grimsby scrambling back, and Freestone, I feel, could have done a little bit better. Freestone there, benefiting from the work of his strike partner, John Gale. And when Grimsby conceded the opening goal here in their final of five weeks ago, it was the presence of big Steve Fletcher of Bournemouth that unsettled them. Work from Heggs, cut out by McDermott. Yeah, it's a good front three, I think. Heggs wide in the left. McDermott's going to have to keep an eye on him. He's full of tricks. But the presence, the target man, Gale, and the pace of Freestone can cause Grimsby big problems. Brain having to do a, a retrieval job after that ball from Chris Freeston. Well, is he dreaming of last season? That last-minute gas left foot strike. Can he do it again? He scored two goals since. That's John Frain, and one of them was another free kick. McDermott. I think the game is, is going to plan. I think Grimsby like to knock it about, Rob, down on the deck. Whereas Northampton are robust. Every challenge, the firing in there, then get it forward. Northampton seeking their second successive promotion via the playoffs. Only Notts County have done it before. And they did it at the start of this decade. And they did it with eight of their players from the previous year. Northampton starting with seven who played last season. This is where I want our worry about Grimsby Rob. Set pieces. Samson in there, so too is Dean Peer and Freeston here looking to get in behind Gallimore. But Aidan Davison is also worried about Northampton's set pieces. He's been making that patently clear this week. Yeah, I think Lever and Handy side have got a big job in their hands. Aerial battles. When, to, when Northampton send the big boys in there alongside Gale. It's important they don't give free, silly free kicks anywhere around the box. Leicester. Donovan. Gallimore. Smith. This is Nogan. Free kick given against Ian Samson for the challenge on Nogan. I think it was a fair. I think it was a fair decision as well. I think Nogan was just spinning Samson there. This is Donovan, who scored in both of the league fixtures against Northampton this season. He was looking for a free kick, but Terry Hilborn waves play on. Samson, Clarkson, His hand aside. Hill. Gallimore. Mark Lever. I think Ian's quite happy that he's not out to say, when Grimsby have it, OK, just let's get behind the ball in numbers, let them knock it about, as long as it's not around their 18-yard box. Dermot there was trying to clear Colin Hill, but Hill, a very experienced player. I'll tell you what, Robbie just reached it as well, didn't he? It's good. I do like less than the moving runs. A hefty old collision there. John Gale offers his apologies. And I'm not sure Wayne Burnett's accepting them either. <laughs> Terry Hildron's not too happy. I think he lands on them pretty hard. Up he goes. You can see that. Oh, there's an elbow there. Right arm. The old forearm smash in the back of Burnett's head. And I'm afraid you can't get away with that. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it amazes me when they can't believe it, you know. He must be joking, ref. You know, that was a... It was blatant, was it? Forearm smash to the back of the head. Well, Burnett, Burnett uh, might be uh, shaken, but not too stirred. Grimsby had a bit of a scare coming into uh, this game when, uh, after the second leg of their playoff semi final, John McDermott collapsed at the training ground with the effects of delayed concussion. Oh, but Wayne Burnett, who was just on the receiving end, there he had the flu. The last final was here, the, you know, the auto windscreen and scored the winner, so. Gale again charging in, this time on Gallimore. Yeah, Gale's fired up, isn't he? Remember last season, uh, last year's playoff when he was having a go at maybe Christian Edwards in the tunnel. And then it was a bit disappointing during the game. Edwards, I thought, played him extremely well. He certainly fired up this afternoon. Former Wimbledon player. And uh, in many ways, if Northampton do continue their progress from last season you wonder if they could start to be the second Wimbledon and go all the way to the Premiership what they've achieved so far has been done on very limited resources and playing to the strengths of those available it's going to be a good battle there the two number sixes I think Burnett for Grimsby and Hunt for Northampton here's handy side Gallimore Cleared by Warburton. I always think, Rob, you know, playoff fans, first goal is so important. Logan. Here's Smith. Donovan's in the box. Good, good defensive play there from Warburton. Read it, the cutback was coming. Good positional sense. Handy side. Is he going to line up one? He has! Well, he's only ever scored one goal in his career, but he thought it was worth a pot shot. Well, honestly, I, I just felt that handy size. Watch the time he's got here. Pierre goes to him, then he's looking for Hunt to come and close. They don't close. Handy says, right, I'll let fly. And that's not too far over. Big centre-half coming forward. Can't believe his luck. Let's go with the right. The only goal that he scored was in a defeat at Tranmere in August of last season. Yet to get off the mark in this campaign. Very well rated, Handy side. Had his fair share of injuries. A few caps, Scotland under 21. Looks as if he's back on song. Hill. The Higgs, he's a, he's a sort of drifter for Northampton. He's the one who can go try down the left hand side, now over on the right flank. These are the free kicks I was talking about, Rob. Unnecessary free kicks, and suddenly Northampton, the cobbler, send in the big boys. The Hex was going nowhere here, and suddenly a dangerous ball in the box. And Frame's free kick winner here last season was direct, but this time he'll be looking for a direct target. Gale is in there, so too is Hex, so too is Samson. Warburton has come forward from the back as well. Taken by Frayne. Uh, good goalkeeping on the six yard line. Aidan Davison, okay, we're in trouble. I'll get us out of it. A little bit close to the keeper from Frayne, but good goalie. Coming in amongst bodies. The net. Inside left position and tucks away with the right foot. 
a shell shot Northampton defence, Woodman on the ground, scrambling, can do nothing, and the favourites go one up. Good experience from Donovan, his third goal against Northampton, and his side go one up, Alan Buckley, get in there, my man's done it again. Well, Alan Buckley was a spectator here when Kevin Donovan scored for West Brom in the 3-0 playoff victory over Port Vale. He later went on to manage him at West Brom, took him with him from the Hawthorns to Blundell Park, and what a wise decision that looks now. He's their top scorer this season, that's his 21st, but has it given them the key to the door of the first division? Well, I think he just took up a fantastic position, no one was picking him up. Samson and Hill were over that side, they couldn't believe it, suddenly Donovan gets clean through on goal. That's where we want to drop an early goal. Now Northampton have to come out. Nogan. And Northampton, who came into this game intending to ruffle a few feathers, have had their own ruffle now by Kevin Donovan. I think the ball might have initially been Ian Axis saying, come on, we've got to watch our runners. The ball, I think, initially was meant for the youngster Leicester. But when it fell in behind them, didn't Donovan seize a chance? Here's Leicester, but net up to his right. He's just thinking back. And Sean Smith scored for the third time against Brentford in that season, and that goal was enough to win at Wembley. Yes, fantastic start for Grimsby. Look at this, incredible. Grimsby with the possession. You know, like to play the ball to feet, whereas Northampton, maybe a little bit direct. Slipped on by Freestone, can Hex get in here? Cleared by Handyside, and Gallimore thought he prevented the corner, and he has. on if you can't go with it on a pass on and how Donovan sneaked in there I'll never know it's the first time he's really ventured away from the right flank now Northampton look to Freestone come on give us your pace and movement Freestone the target Clarkson by Gallimore, only to Clarkson though, plenty of players in the box for him, but he can't clear Wayne Burnett, this is Peer, releasing Freestone, Peer's been seeing a lot of the ball, picking up loose passes, he gave Freestone a lot to do there, but he gained the corner, and once again, Freen with a left foot, with pace on it, We'll put it in this Grimsby box. Oh, is that obstruction or what, referee? Level on corners, but can they cancel out the opening goal from Donovan with Frayne's corner kick? Davis. When you put people on the, the line in the near post and then... He just clutches it easily, the goalkeeper. And straight from the clearance, Leicester's through! Yeah, clear tugging there, there's no doubt about it. Leicester, maybe Young, tugging away, no doubt in my mind, at James Hurt's shirt. Hunt was getting back there in command, but Leicester was putting him under pressure with his pace. But the youngster couldn't get there. Watch this, look, pull, 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 and a clear free kick. Referee Teller, he'll run right up with play, automatically pointing. Not a bad ref, this guy, Rob, keeps telling me off and pronouncing his surname wrong. But it is Hale Brom. Oh, 
Colin Hill looking here for Freestone. And Handy side with a header away. Freestone. Looking for Gale in the box. Gale climbs over Lever. Yeah, Higgs has got to get along, so when the ball's right hand side, Higgs must get close to this fella. If he gets a little nod down or a touch, Carl Higgs can get on the end of it. Hill, Samson steered it neatly away from Smith, this is Clarkson, Freeston looking for the feet of Freeston, I think he, he was entitled to go for that ball, maybe again just from behind, once again another free kick Rob, and this time it's Clarkson overseeing it. Warburton up for it, and decide trying to clear. Back in from Hunt. That was Heggs. Freestone going for the spectacular. are certainly working hard at these free kicks look at Warburton, Samson and Gale they were all at the far post and then they split and Grooms are going to have to deal with this all afternoon free zone trying the spectacular but that doesn't worry Davison here's Leicester blocked initially by Warburton and Northampton had enough men back and Leicester's looked lively up there he's obviously disappointed Rob to miss out in the auto windscreen, but he's electric this afternoon. Pegs. Oh, I think that's what he called playing for a foul. Pegs has got a bit of skill down the left hand side, but McDermott and plenty of Grimsby players doubling up on this fella. Look, just gets a touch on up, he's going nowhere. There's Crane. Clearance goes behind for the corner. And there's pressure from set pieces. And once again, look at the players, Northampton players heading for the goal line. Piers in there, big John Gales in there. It really is a nightmare for Aiden Davison. Hex is also there inside the six yard box just to add to the confusion. Warburton, the target, got it down. Freestone looking to turn. Yeah, what they're doing is, Rob, as you're right, they're packing the goal line and Warburton and Samson. They're the two players who split at the far post. Once again, the captain wins the ball, but there's a couple of Grimsley players. In fact, there's no doubt about it. Freestone had another half chance there. That's his uh, third attempt. Tried to repeat uh, Dennis Stewart's famous overhead goal here in the League Cup. Jack Lester. McDermott. Grimsby have done well to withstand the pressure that they faced since going a goal up through Kevin Donovan. But there'll be no let up from a very spirited Northampton side. They concentrate a lot in their preparation on positive thinking. And ever since they reached this playoff final, their dressing room walls at the Sixfield Stadium have been plastered with the grounds of first division clubs and dummy newspaper headlines celebrating a Wembley victory here to try and get the players in the right sort of positive frame of mind. Pierre. Well, since Grimsley have got this opener, Rob, they're really sitting back now. I'm not sure that's a wise, a wise ploy. Northampton growing in confidence now. Ian Atkins, a deep thinker about the game. 
I don't know why they're shouting. No one can understand them with that deep Brummie accent. <laughs> Players look at them shaking their heads. Yeah, he'd be disappointed with the start, but he'd be much more happier now. I think he's midfielder now beginning to get on top. Hunt. Here's Gale. And a free kick given against him. Gale already shown the yellow card, remember. Yeah, he's got the key off. I don't know if there's a bit of handball there. He's such a big, big fella, isn't he? Just try to out his arm there, but then... Uh, I don't know. Lever goes to the ground, referee says free kick. Maybe a little bit unlucky. Terry Hillborn said before the game that his intention was to let it flow, and he's doing that wherever possible. That's the Grimsby fans, you can hear now. Out number 21 easily, but noisy enough. This is the area I think Grimsby are beginning to lose it, Rob. Central midfield. Clarkson looking to release Freestone. And hesitation behind Handeside, who really had to do his job there, because Davison had come off his line. Yeah, I just feel a Freestone had somehow wriggled clear and got an early one in. Watch the goalkeeper come in here. Handy sides back there waiting for a call. And if somehow Freestone could have hooked it in, there was Northampton players in the box, Gale and, and Heggs. And again, Freestone goes into that packed compartment in the six yard box. Hunt, Warburton, Samson all waiting at the edge of the area. It's curled in though, and again, it's easy pickings for the goalkeeper. Well, Davison just seems to be able to pick his spot. And John Frayne has really got to use the ball better. He's got his two big centre-halves at the far post. Or if he's going to put it near post, it's got to be away from the goalkeeper. Well, Warburton has uh, gone down after an injury in the centre circle. Great ball from Burnett. Precision for Donovan. Combining with Leicester, or attempting to. Yeah, the touch wasn't there, but every time this fella, Kevin Donovan, gets on the ball, he is such a threat. Lovely, comes inside, just runs at the two centre-halves. But how did he find himself in this position here? The ball's aimed at Leicester, he lets it run, and suddenly Donovan on it in a flash. The goalkeeper decides the right way, but Donovan's experience, he doesn't rush this. He takes his time, he shows a, throws a dummy, and really Andy Woodman stays on his feet as long as possible, and that's the opener. When Kevin Donovan scored for West Brom against Port Vale. They were actually making a return to Wembley, having won the equivalent of what is now the auto windscreen shield. And if Donovan's goal from his one attempt is enough to secure the victory for Grimsby, they'll be the first team to win that trophy and then return and win the playoff final in the same season. Frames kick. Gale's presence again on Seth and Grimsby as Hunt. This is Heggs. He's managed to win it from McDermott, but the cross goes to Groves. Freestone in quickly, though. That's Donovan. Challenge late by Frame. Yeah, Donovan quickly to his feet, though, saying, All right, ref, all right. I know it was late. I think John Frame, well, I was going to say, he might, it might escape with just a bit of a rollicking from the ref, but unlucky. There's no doubt it was late. Donovan's on his feet, back on the halfway line, no problem, but it's the lunge and the late challenge merits a yellow card. Warburton, Hanks. The problem that Heggs has got here, McDermott's very close to him, McDermott's pacey, and he has to beat him with skill rather than pace. McDermott's quite happy having leaving the ball to Heggs as long as he's got his back towards the Grimsby goal. No problems when he's facing up using his tricks, could trouble McDermott. Burnett. 
Here's Groves. And it struck him and come to Smith. Second bite at the cherry, perhaps, for Smith. Gallimore. And that was a wasted opportunity, Rob, wasn't it? Smith had all the time in the world there to put the ball in the box. side McDermott on the side McDermott Lever and Leicester have all come through Grimsby's youth scheme This is Hex. Northampton being urged on with just over 10 minutes of the first half to go. Randy says having a good match for Grimsby. Hunt. This is Gray. From Hedges in towards John Gale. Gale. Gale beaten Lever there, but couldn't direct it down to one of his players. Hunt going down right on mm. the edge of the box. Well, obstruction, I think, is a shout here. And this is danger for Grimsby. Just a yard inside the box. It's just lock. Gale again's presence there. Hunt goes in, certainly impeded by Lever. And this could just be John Frame with his left peg. The perfect an angle for a left footer. Frame has to be the favourite for a strike here or Hunt there to touch it to him. Will he place it, Rob, or is it power? I fancy power. Will he go straight for the target and hope for a deflection on route? Look at the pushing going on in that wall. <laughs> Three stones getting pushed, but no doubt you can't back in. Surely it's going to be lined up for John Frame. It is, and it's cleared by the wall. I was just yeah. thinking with all the pushing going on, though, that uh, when he scored from a free kick last year, it had to be retaken because of encroachment, and there was plenty of movement in that wall. It's Sam since he's left, you know, I just wonder if they're going to play at the big centre-half. Play by Clarkson, Christo looking to get in. Peer, driven back across, the outstretched boot of Warburton just couldn't make contact. Yeah, once again, the ball in the danger area, but McDermott made a great challenge there for Grimsby with a little full-back. Just lobbed in, look at McDermott in amongst the bodies there, getting his head to the ball. Eventually coming out, the big fella on the left foot, trying the strike and well wide. But good pressure for Northampton, but Grimsby are defending well, especially this little fella McDermott. Well, the playoff weekend reaches its climax tomorrow at 2 o'clock on Sky Sports 2 with the first division playoff final and a place in the Premiership at stake for either Charlton or Sunderland. Make sure you're with us from 2. Good battle again there with Gale. The Hampton fans felt maybe a free kick, but this fella's happy, isn't he, Donovan? Three again, three game, three goals, I should say, and three games against Northampton. One goal has been enough to win the playoff finals the last four times that they've taken place 
including uh, Friday's victory for Colchester over Torquay. Is Donovan's goal going to be enough for Grimsby? Good play from Andy Sainz again. Good football and centre-half this fella. Here's Donovan. Northampton squeezing up, looking for the offside, which was why Leicester was forced to come so deep. And Grimsby are playing this spot on, Rob. Defending well, getting back in numbers. But going forward, they are so dangerous. Burnett. Donovan. Heggs. Foul by Donovan. Yeah, there's a little bit... He's, I think Terry Hilbron's right there. No, no yellow card for me, but Heggs a little bit... Slow getting his legs going, getting away from people. There's no doubt the chance from behind and Donovan catches him. I'd like to see him move with the ball quicker. Here. Freeston managed to stay onside a good header again though from Lever Lever knows he's got to battle big John Gale and he's doing really well Groves here's Hex Smith. Very, very tight in that central area, all right through the, down the central channel. Northampton coming back into it, I think, with possession wise, but Grimsby still with the upper hand, and obviously that Donovan goal. The recurring theme in the build up to this match was the Clash in styles, and at the moment, Grimsby coping admirably with uh, Northampton style. Uh, but so far, Northampton been the danger that we might have expected them to be from their set pieces. Well, I think Lever and Handy side have defended tremendously well, plus some of the balls in, especially from Frey, and Davison's hands. Hampton fans way behind Andy Woodman's goal there in the distance. A bit quiet at the moment. Leicester. Here's Nogan. He once scored the opening goal in a playoff final and yet still finished on the losing side with Reading to Bolton. This is Donovan. Leicester. Donovan's made another good run forward, although he has been tracked by Crane. McDermott. Lever. Yeah, they're keeping the ball well, aren't they, Grimsby? And Donovan, the movement up front, Rob, I'm talking about. Donovan, you know, he's got good movement. Look, one comes short and then threads it in into the second striker. That's good play for me. There's two strikers against three centre-halves, and yet they're still getting the ball to feet. Long clearance from Warburton. And again, Freeston handled comfortably by Peter Handeside. Here's Hanks. Northampton perhaps sending an equaliser before half-time. Yeah, a little bit too high. Again, Davison comes out. Heggs quickly on the right foot, getting in, but good goalkeeping once again. And a little bit of confusion there between Samson and Woodman. 
Well, I don't know what Samson's thinking about there because the ball bounces high. All he's got to do is just nod it back to his goalkeeper. Just there, but he lets it run, and all of a sudden he's in danger. Leicester on it in a flash. Grimsby's 68th match of the season. A season that's been full of adventures for them, including uh, cup defeats at Ellen Road and Anfield. But some pretty distinguished scalps along the way. They knocked Sheffield Wednesday and Leicester out of the Coca-Cola Cup and Norwich out of the FA Cup. But this is the most important game of them all. And they're right. leading through Kevin Donovan's goal. Definitely right, Rob. You know, apart from the good football inside, they are gritty, determined. After the auto windscreen, they went right up to Carlisle and won an important league game. So it's a nice blend, nice mixture that Alan Buckley's side have. Ballymore. His handy side. The down was by Paul Groves. Hex for Northampton. Well, Alan Buckley was soured by his experience at uh, West Brom, where he was dismissed after just 18 months in charge. But will he be leading Grimsby to the Hawthorns next season in the first division? Yeah, that would seem like 10 years ago now. He likes Wembley, Alan Buckley. Leicester. And it's come off Colin Hill for the corner. I think Ian Atkins will be disappointed with his three centre-halves, Rob. There'll be too much freedom, the likes of Leicester and Nogan. You know, they're making good, they're making quality runs. And they're getting the ball to feet, but really the three centre halves have to make their minds up. Two mark, one sweep, get closer. Must to be two minutes of stoppage time in this first half. And Kevin Donovan to take the corner. Here's McDermott. Groves up with the header. And he keeps sneaking in there, doesn't he, Groves? He's a holding player, gets through a lot of work in the central midfield, but when it's wide, Paul Groves gets in there. Ball to the far post, McDermott, and can't direct it down to one of his players. Paul Groves, whose first Wembley appearance here was with Burton Allen. And the Northampton goalkeeper, Andy Woodman, was actually a ball boy here that day. Brain. There's Groves looking for Smith. I think they might look for a little bit more from Dave Smith's second half. He has got pace, good left foot. I haven't seen too much of him. He's done well though getting back defensively, but when he's had a chance to you know get the ball in quickly on the left foot, let him down a little bit. It's the Grimsby anthem of Sing When We're Fishing that's ringing around Wembley at the moment. The big catch. Samson's throw. And at half time. It's Grimsby who have the advantage, thanks to the goal in the 18th minute from Kevin Donovan. Slackness at the back from Northampton, who didn't deal with a through ball from Burnett that was intended for Leicester. Donovan nipped into the space and took it round the goalkeeper, and Alan Buckley had just cause to celebrate his team taking a very useful lead. They've managed to withstand the Northampton pressure since. Most of the possession has been with Grimsby anyway. And at half-time at Wembley, it's Grimsby 1, Northampton Town 0.